Ready for painless domain management? Sounds too good to be true? I'm here to show you how. Let's take a closer look at the Hostinger DNS Zone Editor. DNS stands for Domain Name System. It's a standard protocol that translates a domain name into IP address. Every time you type a domain name into your browser, it will look up the matching IP address within the DNS. This way, your browser communicates with the server to download and show the website content on your computer screen. Sounds simple so far. Great. Now think of the DNS as a massive phone book filled with all sorts of domain names. A DNS zone is like a section in that phone book dedicated to a specific domain. It contains information such as where the website site is hosted, where the emails should be delivered, and the other instructions related to the domain. For example, you can have one DNS zone for your website and another for your email services. A DNS zone editor comes in handy if you need to tweak your domain settings for these different purposes. While many hosting providers do include a DNS zone editor by default, most of them are less extensive. At Hostinger, the DNS zone editor is a part of the H panel within shared cloud and WordPress hosting plans. For VPS users, this feature is only available if your domain is registered and transferred to Hostinger. Besides, purchasing a domain name from Hostinger will let you access the DNS Zone Editor immediately. In this video, I'll show you how to access it and how you can use it to manage your domain. Before that, hit that subscribe button for more tutorials on how to navigate HPanel or other helpful website development tips. We have new videos every week, so turn on your notifications so you won't miss out on new content. Without further ado, let's get started. If hosting your DNS zone editor comes with your hosting plan, you can find it by logging into HPanel. Navigate to Websites tab, click Manage on the website you want to configure. Choose Advanced and then DNS zone editor. You'll be taken to a page similar to this. In case it's inaccessible, on your end, check if your domain name connects to your hosting plan and uses the correct name servers. You can go to your hosting plan details to find that out. If you also bought a domain name at Hostinger, there's another way to access the DNS Zone Editor. Navigate to the Domains tab, click Manage next to the domain name you wish to tweak, and then choose DNS slash name servers. If you scroll down a bit, you'll see that you can edit, add, and remove DNS records the way you want. While we're here, you'll see different types of DNS records under the drop-down menu here. I'll explain each of them as I show you how to edit them next. Let's go with the A record first, the most basic one that specifies which IP version 4 addresses the domain name points to. In case you don't know yet, IP version 4 is the most commonly used version of internet protocol today. In simpler terms, it's what allows devices to communicate with each other over the internet. By default, there are two listings in the DNS zone editor. One is for the domain with an FTP subdomain, which is designated specifically for FTP access. In other words, words, only your domain.com without triple W or any other subdomains like blog.yourdomain.com. So these two default listings can be read as ftp.yourdomain.com and yourdomain.com are pointing to this IP address. If you want to point the domain or its subdomains to an additional IP address, simply add a new A record by filling in these sections here. Choose A from type, use at if you want the domain name to point to another IP address, or you can add a subdomain name here, enter the IP address that you want to point to, and leave the TTL value as it is. TTL stands short for time to leave. This field specifies how long the DNS resolver should save the query from this domain as a cache. Most hosting providers usually set it to 14,400 seconds or 4 hours. Okay, once you're done, hit add record. That was for adding a new entry, but you can also edit a record by clicking this button and changing the value accordingly. If you want to delete the entry, click this button instead. The way you add, edit, or delete a DNS record, no matter the type, using the same steps, it's just the information value that you add that's different. Now let's talk about the AAAA record which acts almost like a twin of the A record. It basically functions the same way, and the only difference is the IP version used. 
Quad A record points to IP version 6 addresses, which is the latest version of the internet protocol to date. Hostinger supports IP version 6, so by default, there's a Quad A listing present as well. Having both IP version 4 and IP version 6 for your website ensures compatibility with a wider range of users and networks. In case you're pointing a domain to VPS, you need to add it manually. Simply enter the same exact information as you did while adding an A record, except this time you'll need an IP version 6 address that looks something like this. Now let's choose MX from the drop down menu. This record defines the mail servers responsible for receiving emails sent to your domain name. If you want to use a third-party email hosting service, delete the default MX record and add a new one. The new entries you have to fill in while adding the record include the following. Mail server, which is the server address that will receive your emails, and priority, which will decide which email server address to use first when collecting the emails. The lowest number represents the highest priority. See name record assigns domains or subdomains that can serve as aliases for a website's primary domain. We know that it's still common for people to enter triple W before a domain, so this is why we want this URL to point to your site as well. And the CNAME record makes that possible. Just keep in mind that when adding a new CNAME record, add your domain name in the target field, not the IP address. Moving on, we have the NS record, which lists the name server values Hostinger has graciously provided. Keep in mind that NS record should always stay pointed to these values. Added them only when you want to transfer your website to a different host. SRV record is empty by default, as typically you won't need to add SRV records yourself. You'll need it if you're managing your server infrastructure or have specific service configuration needs. For example, SRV records is typically used for internet protocols like VoIP and XMPP, both of which facilitate user communication via the internet. The required information for this record is similar to others, but the name format is different. Fill in this section with a number which will determine which SRV record to contact first if there is more than one record with the same priority. The higher the number, the higher the priority. Then provide the port number used by the servers, the domain address of the destination server, and the record's priority. Remember that the system will prioritize records with lower numbers. Now moving on to the TXT record. It adds text information that is readable to external parties, usually for security and verification purposes. Common examples of TXT records are sender policy framework and domain keys identified mail. Website owners generally use both to secure email exchange changes from spoofing or phishing attempts. Google Apps also uses TXT records for domain verification purposes. Hostinger's DNS Zone Editor already has an SPF TXT record created by default. If you want to add a new TXT record, you'll see TXT value field instead of points too. Here you'll need to fill in the information you want to specify in the record. Lastly, there's CAA record that defines the certificate authority that can issue SSL sell certificates for domain. If you have multiple subdomains, there's no need to create separate CAA records for each one. One entry set for the root domain will automatically apply to all subdomains. Hostinger includes multiple CAA records by default, but if you want to add another CAA record, you'll need to provide the following information. Flag should be unsigned integer from 0 to 255. The default flag is zero. Then choose between the issue, issue wild, or IODF tags. Issue will authorize a single certificate authority to grant any type of certificate. Issue wild allows the certificate authority only to use a wildcard certificate. An IODF is for specifying the contact information the certificate authority can report to if there are any CAA related issues. Last, fill in the domain of the certificate authority here. And I think we're done. Congratulations, you can now edit your own DNS records. But what if you run into a problem? So, in case of an error, which can sometimes occur after editing the DNS zone, you can reset the DNS settings to default. It's very simple to do. You just need to scroll down to the bottom and hit this button. Click Reset to confirm. 
Just like that, your DNS settings will be set to default again. By completing this video, you should be able to navigate all that hosting your DNS zone editor has to offer. What did you think? Let me know in the comment section below and I'll make sure to leave a reply as soon as possible. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on new Hostinger Academy videos. Thank you for watching and good luck on your online journey!